I wish to start tonight by telling you a prison experience. When the communists took over my homeland, Romania, they did what they did everywhere, where they came to power, what they would do in this country too, if ever it would fall under them. They put in prison thousands of Christians, Protestant pastors of all denominations, Jewish rabbis, but also thousands of laymen, farmers, workers, young boys, young girls, whosoever witnessed actively for his faith, went to prison. And we who were considered somehow to be leading personalities of the underground church, we were kept during years in solitary confinement, I myself and others, we were during years 30 feet beneath the earth. We never saw sun, moon, snow, flowers, stars, mountains, rivers. I had forgotten that these things exist. We never had a Bible nor any other book. We never had a bit of paper or a pen. I had forgot to write. I have not seen a lady for 10 years. I have not seen a child for 10 years. In solitary confinement, we saw nobody except the wardens and the torturers. We never heard a sound. The cells were soundproof. We never heard a whisper. We saw nothing. We heard nothing. Perfect silence reigned in those prison cells. We had almost nothing to eat. Sometimes one slice of bread a week. Fourteen years I have never seen a color. We always saw the gray walls of the cell and our gray uniforms. I had forgotten that brown and blue and green and red and pink and violet exist. Our world was gray. And years passed like this, one year after another. I became very, very tired. And one night I said to our Lord, Lord, you see, I have no brethren, no sisters. I don't have your written word. I don't have Holy Communion. I have none of these things. But you have spoken so often directly to persons. And as I have nobody to speak to me, would you speak to me tonight? And then, it were exceptional circumstances. And in exceptional circumstances, exceptional things happen. And when I said, you, Lord, speak to me, I heard his voice. His sheep hear his voice. Now, I expected from him a word of comfort, a word which should strengthen me in my faith. Instead of this, I heard very strange words. He put to me a question. What is your name? It's very strange for a God to ask somebody what is his name. And so the Lord put to me the strange question. What is your name? Now, I had known all my life that my name is Richard. But in that moment, I could not reply to Jesus, my name is Richard. Because I happened to have read in church history that in Britain there was once a big saint with the name of Richard, who, because of his faith, has been sentenced to death. It was known that he was a believer and propagated his faith. It were times of persecution. And now Richard was on the gallows. And the executioner had some difficulty in fixing the noose of his rope. And Richard was such a good, good man. He could not bear that anybody should have a difficulty because of him. So he went to the henchman, bowed before him and said, Sir, I'm so sorry to give you trouble. I am a farmer, I am skilled. Would you allow me to help you? I know how to fix the noose of the rope. And the executioner, as executioners usually are, was very polite and allowed Richard to help him. And Richard fixed the noose.
Then he bowed again to the executioner and said, Thank you very much for having been so kind. And know that I have no grudge against you. I am very happy to go to the Lord. Thank you for everything. And with a big smile on his face, Richard died. And I have the same name as that saint. And I fear to say to Jesus, my name is Richard, because what if I say, my name is Richard, and he says, are you like that, Richard? So I could not say that I am Richard. Should I say I am a Christian, I fear to say it, because I knew that in the first centuries, under the Roman persecution, Christians entered into the arena of circuses to be devoured by wild beasts for their faith, and they said, Christianusum, I am a Christian, and I was not as courageous as those Christians. He had asked me, what is your name? I bowed before him and said, Jesus, I have no name. Allow me to bear your name. And that is what he really wishes from us. Paul understood it. Not I live. Not the old Paul, not the new Paul. The I has been abolished. Not I live. But Christ lives in me.